Good morning. Since we have other snow problems, we will have our second discussion of linear systems, which I more or less went through in class on the previous meeting again. The reason for this is several people managed to get stuck in their driveways and stuff like this. To start with, I'm going to look at a system of linear equations, x plus 5y equal 1, and 3x plus 2y equal 4. If you follow the ideas that we had previously, then I would solve the first equation probably for x in terms of y, put that into the second equation, figure out what y was, and then figure out what x was. That's the method of substitution, but I want to work with this in a more direct way. One thing that I can do is I can replace one of the equations with whatever that equation is minus some quantity, which I'm calling the something here. As long as the something isn't actually equal to equation number two, this process is reversible. I can take my new equation number two and add the something to both sides and recover the original equation number two. So I can add or subtract anything from both sides of equation number two, and that something is going to be picked in a careful way. If I think about that first equation, x plus 5y equals 1, if I were to multiply both sides of that equation by 3, I'd say that 3 times x plus 5y is 3 times 1. I think it's obvious that that means the same thing as the original equation, because if I knew this, I could divide both sides by 3 and recover the original equation. I'm going to take equation number 2, which says 3x plus 2y equals 4. 3x plus 2y equals 4. And I'm going to subtract away 3 times the first equation. Now, the first equation says that x plus 5y and 1 are the same number. I'm going to subtract away 3 multiplied by the quantity x plus 5y, the left-hand side of this first equation. And then I'm also, over on the other side, going to subtract away 3 times the right-hand side of the first equation. So when I do this, I'm literally subtracting 3 times the first equation away from the second equation. Let's simplify this. I think it's pretty clear to everyone that the reason I multiplied the first equation by 3 was when I write this out, this quantity that I'm subtracting, it'll be 3 times x plus 15 times y. That's the quantity I'm subtracting. And the minus 3x will cancel the 3x out. In the resulting new version of the second equation, variable x doesn't show up, only variable y does. 2y minus 15y is negative 13y. 4 minus 3 is 1. My new second equation tells me that negative 13 times y must equal 1, meaning that y must be negative 1 over 13, Assuming that I've done my arithmetic correctly, I know one of the two variables now. So by taking one of the equations and replacing it with a combination of itself and the other equation, we transformed the system into this. As we said, this has the same set of solutions as the original system did because we could recover the original system. On the other hand, this is nice because negative 13y equal 1 
immediately tells us that y has to be negative 1 over 13. We'll see what the first equation has to say now. Assuming that I've done all my arithmetic correctly, the x has to work out to be 18 divided by 13. If the arithmetic is correct, we have exactly one solution, one pair of numbers, x and y, that make both of the equations true. Whenever we can, we should check our answers. So I'm going to take this alleged solution and make sure that it makes both of the original equations true. If I've made any mistakes, I can catch it that way. I'll put my alleged x and y values into the first equation and see if the left-hand side, if the x plus 5y really is equal to 1 like it's supposed to be. A direct calculation tells me, yes, it is. So my xy that I cooked up make the first equation true. It also has to make the second equation true, though, so we have to check that also. Putting my values for x and y into the left-hand side of the second equation, I end up with 52 divided by 13, which is 4. My computed x and y obey the second equation also, so we actually have the single unique solution to that system of equations. We didn't solve for one of the variables in terms of the other one. We combined the equations directly. The method that we used before is substitution. This method is elimination. Let's look at a slightly more complicated situation. This time, I'm going to have three equations with three variables in them, x, y, and z. I've tried to pick the numbers in the system to make the arithmetic work out very nicely. Like we did in our previous meeting, I could solve one of those equations, say for x in terms of y and z, put those expressions into the last two equations, and then work with the system of two equations with two variables, and then do the process again, figure out one of the variables, then use that to figure out another one, then that to figure out the last one. That's not what we're going to do, though. Here's what I want to do. The variable x is the first of my three variables as I have them listed. I'm going to want x to show up in the first equation, but not the second equation, and not the third equation. We'll figure out how to make that happen, and then see what the result is. Now, based on what we did previously, I'm going to replace equation number 2 with what it is now, minus 2 times equation number 1. By doing that, the new improved version of equation number 2 will have no x term in it. After I do that, I'm going to replace equation number 3 with what it is now, minus 3 times the first equation. And of course, the reason for doing that is the new version of the third equation won't have any x in it. So we'll be eliminating the x from all equations except the first one. We need to do the arithmetic. If I do the indicated calculations here, I find out that my new version of equation number 2 is going to be negative 3y minus 6z equals negative 9. I could just write that down as my new second equation, or if I wanted to be slightly clever about it, I'll take this and divide through by negative 3 to get the slightly nicer looking y plus 2z equals 3. This is the result of combining equations number 1 and number 2 in such a way so that the result has no x term in it. My new and improved version of the second equation is 
y plus 2z equals 3. To get my new and improved version of equation number 3, I'm going to take equation number 3, which says 3x plus 6y plus 10z equals 19, and I'm going to subtract away 3 times the first equation in order to get rid of that 3x term. So I'm going to subtract away on the left 3 times the left-hand side of equation number 1, and on the right, I'll subtract away 3 times the right-hand side of equation number 1. Doing the arithmetic, I found out that my new and improved equation number 3 is negative 6y minus 11z equals negative 17, and again, just because it looks a little more convenient for me, I'll multiply this equation through by negative 1. My new and improved version of equation number 3 is 6y plus 11z equals 17. So I'll write it in, in my new and improved system. Notice that what's happened is what I wanted. Variable x shows up in the first equation, but doesn't show up in the second or third. I do have one additional issue, though. If I could get rid of the 6y term in that last equation, there would only be z's left in it. It would say some number times z equals some number. If I knew that, then I could figure out what the z was, then I would back up in my system of equations and figure out what the y was, and then back up one more step and find out what the x is. So we will look at that next. The first equation already looks the way I want it to look, so I'm not going to mess with it. The second equation I'm going to leave alone also. What I want to do is I want to get an even newer and more improved version of equation number 3. I'm going to replace equation number 3 with what it currently is with a multiple of the second equation. Since neither one of these two equations have an x term in it, there will not be an x term in the result. Also, I'm going to be very sneaky and I'm going to make my combination in a way so that I get rid of that 6y term. That's the trick here. So I'm going to replace equation number 3 with what it currently is, minus 6 times equation number 2. By doing this, my newest and last version of equation number 3 simplifies down into negative of z is negative 1, which obviously, as before, I'm just going to write z equal 1. This is the original version of equation number 1. This was the first new version for equation number 2. This is the second new version of equation number 3. Because of what we've talked about previously, the solutions of this system of equations are the same as the solutions of this system. So if I can solve this, I have solved that. Also, this is that nice triangular form that we mentioned, so this ought to be easy. The bottom equation literally says that z is 1. If I go up one step in the equations and use the fact that I already know what z is, y plus 2 times z, which is 1, must equal 3. y must be 3 minus 2. y must be 1 also. And then backing up one more step to the first equation, you find out that x plus 4 times 1, that's the y, plus 7 times 1, that's the z, must be 12. x plus 11 must be 12. x must be 1. There is exactly one set 
of x, y, z numbers that make all three equations true, that one solution is x, y, z equals 1, 1, 1. If you like, you can take these, put them back in the original equations, and see if they work or not. I'm just going to be lazy and say, you'll find out that they do. Let's look at another example of this. It's too bad that middle equation isn't the first one because then the arithmetic would be a lot easier on me. But that's actually no problem. If I say that I want that to be true, and that to be true, and that to be true, that's the same as saying that I want that to be true, and that to be true, and that to be true. The order in which I write my equations down shouldn't make any difference. I should feel free not only to do these multiple of one equation from another thing that we've been doing, but if it's convenient for me, I can write my equations down in a different order. This will have some relevance to us later. My new equation number two is going to be equation number two minus two times equation number one. Not to belabor the details, it's the same kind of calculation we did before. My new and improved equation number two is going to be 3y plus z equals 4. I also need my new and improved version of equation number 3. Leaving out a verbal description of all of the calculations, the new version of equation number 3 is going to be 3y plus z equals 12. I'll write my new system of equations down on the next page. So, after doing all of our manipulations, the original system is equivalent to this system. Now, there's two ways I can go from here. One of them is to pretend that I don't notice there's going to be a problem. The other one of which is to look at this and say, I see a problem. Before we do either one of those things, keep in mind what it is we're trying to do. We're trying to find variable values, x, y, and z, that make all three of those equations true. Now, if I didn't notice that there was any trouble, I'd say to myself, I'm in luck. Both the second and third equations starts off with three times y. So if I replace the last equation with what it is now, minus the middle equation, the result won't have any y in it. If I actually do that, I see now what the problem is. The left-hand side of the second equation and that of the third one are the same. They're both 3y plus z. So when I subtract those, I get 0 no matter what y and z might be. But on the other hand, 12 minus 4 is 8. So I have to ask myself, what values for x, y, and z make this equation true? The answer is, there aren't any. 0 equal 8 is a statement that's false regardless of what x, y, and z are. There is no y and z that will obey the second and third equations. Therefore, there are no y's and z's to put into that top formula. This system of equations has no solutions at all. And I want to do one more example of this general type, and then in the next discussion, we'll start talking about better ways to write this, and also we'll talk about some particular forms, like the echelon form, and the reduced row echelon form, which will be informative to us as well. Doing the obvious, I'm going to have a new version of equation 2. It'll be what it is now, minus 2 times equation 1, to make that 2x go away. 
When the dust finally settles, it turns out to be pretty nice. It says y plus 0z plus 0w is 1. That's just going to tell me that the y must be 1. I'm also going to get a new version of equation number 3. Doing all the usual algebra, my new and improved system of equations reads x plus y plus z plus w should be 0, y plus nothing plus nothing should be 1, y plus nothing plus nothing should be 1. This is kind of similar to the preceding example, except in the opposite direction. In the preceding example, the last two equations contradict each other. In this case, the last two equations say the same thing. If I didn't notice that, I would then think, okay, to get my completely reduced system of equations, I'll just subtract to the second one from the third one to get rid of this y. That'll get rid of the y, all right. It's going to get rid of everything else, though, too. That last equation says 0 times y, which is 0, plus 0 times z, which is 0, plus 0 times w, has to add up to 0. It's a very interesting equation because it doesn't say anything. Ideally, we would have got rid of the y term, and then we would have had some relationship between w and z. But there isn't any such thing. There are no numbers that make this false. It doesn't say anything about w, or z, or y. Then, when I back up into the next part of my equations here, 0 times z and 0 times w are 0, no matter what z and w are. So those last two terms on the left don't matter. The middle equation says that y equals 1. And the top equation then is going to say x plus 1 plus z, whatever that is, plus w, whatever that is, must be 0. And our bottom equation put no restriction on w, no restriction on z. To get a solution of this, you get to pick the z and the w. Then you'll set the y to be 1, because that's what the middle equation says, and then x plus 1 plus whatever you picked the z plus whatever you picked the w needs to equal 0. A common mistake that people make in this kind of situation is to say, solution set, all real numbers. That's not right. When I'm thinking about my x, y, z, and w, there's going to be an infinite number of solutions, but you can't just say all real numbers because the y always has to be 1. The z could be any real number. The w can be any real number. If you make a selection of that, write those two numbers down here, put a 1 there, and write negative 1 minus whatever number you picked, minus whatever other number you picked, and you've got yourself a solution. There's an infinite number of solutions determined by two independent parameters, the z and the w. This is about everything I was wanting to talk about in this one, so pretty soon, We'll have a matrix notation for this kind of thing. We will explore various forms, like echelon form and so on, and then move on from there. I hope that everybody is staying safe with the ice and the snow and the temperatures and all, and I'll talk to you again soon.